Hey everyone, it's Greg Flyshaker, Greg Fly to my friends, and today I am making fried chicken. So I'm doing a double batch or a bigger batch than I normally do. So some of the sizes of the ingredients or the serving sizes will be a little bit off, but uh, basically I do this in several steps. The first is to get my chicken that I'm going to fry later into a brine. So that's what I'm doing now. Uh, buttermilk, I use uh, sort of a lo not sort of a locally uh, sourced full fat buttermilk and then uh, salt, pepper, paprika, uh, garlic powder, and uh, a little bit of cayenne. And that's my brine. So next step is to get the chicken out. And this is just personal preference. I know a lot of people like the drumsticks or the thigh or the um, breast or, you know, bone in chicken. I actually in, in prefer to get just boneless uh, breasts and sort of make chicken strips, not sort of, I, I keep saying sort of, chicken strips. So uh, boneless there, and then I just slice them into long strips, throw that in the brine. I'm not gonna make you watch me cut all the chicken. Um, so I think I have six full breasts there. I'll cut each one into uh, about three pieces and just make sure they're all covered. And I like to do this several hours before I plan on cooking. So one of those things, the longer the better. If I can get five hours, great. Um, you know, if it's two hours, three hours, I'll take it. So you can see that only took like 10 minutes to get the brine going and the chicken in there. Um, so now it's eight o'clock at night. I don't normally cook dinner at eight o'clock. Just one of those weird family uh, change of plans things where uh, we had to move things around. So uh, it's a late, late dinner. And I make uh, too much chicken. I make more than enough for dinner because it makes really good leftovers. So again, this is a uh, maybe one and a half times, twice as much as I normally make on uh, an evening for dinner, but leftover. So the, the amount of flour I'm using here, again, is more than I usually do. I think that was five cups and two tablespoons of baking powder. And that's really important. That gives you some of the rise or the bubble and the crunch of your breading. Um, so just sort of set that aside. Now I'm taking the chicken out of the brine and I just want to take I don't want to spend too much time doing this, but quickly remove some of the buttermilk so it's not too wet and then lightly dredge the chicken and the flour. So I'm not going for the final coating here. This is just a light dredge. So take as much of that buttermilk off and then uh, lightly toss it in the, the flour and you're just going for a really light coating. And then what I'll do is I'll go back into the batter there or to the brine that's seasoned. Remember we seasoned it? So that I go back in and get it quite wet and then that's what it looks like. So it's a lot of texture, a lot of flour, and then that baking powder in there is what's going to make it sort of bubble up and crunch um, at the end. So uh, take the buttermilk off, lightly dredge it, then back into the buttermilk, and then get your coating. So that took 20 minutes to get all that done. I started melting my coconut oil. I always do my fried chicken and coconut oil. So I, I had that warming up while I was uh, getting all the chicken ready. I take it up to 350 degrees, 325, somewhere in between there. And then right when it starts to smoke a little bit, I'll put the chicken in. I usually like to go eight to 10 pieces, just that's the size of my um, griddle there or skillet. So that's nine pieces. You can see I'm half an hour in from starting the, the chicken. Um, so it only cooks a few minutes per side. Depends again on your skillet. And then again, it depends how crispy or brown you like your, your chicken. So, oops, those got stuck. A couple minutes per side. It really doesn't take that long. It's just one of those recipes that you have to start early in the day and actually think it through to make sure you have time to do each step. So you turn them over. When it's, you know, as brown as you like it, you're done. And then sometimes I'll warm the oven up to 200 degrees or 175, and then I'll put the chicken in to warm up while I do the next batch. So you can just see the, the oil's already hot. Might as well keep going. Uh, you're making a mess. And this is why I like to do two or three batches at a time, because we usually go through it during the week. And uh, anyone who's read my blog enough knows that sometimes I'll use einkorn flour on the chicken breading here, and my kids really don't notice any difference. And you end up with, I think, pretty tasty chicken strips, uh, fried chicken and coconut oil. It's pretty quick, it's pretty easy, it's delicious.